Despite how much has been learned about the Earth and its more than 1,000 active volcanoes, several things in the field of volcanology remain a mystery. For instance, in the past 10,000 years, there were several supermassive volcanic eruptions which caused worldwide famines and volcanic winters, each being more than 100 times the size of the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. The most recent example of such was the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia, which caused the so-called year without a summer. However, the origin of several other similarly sized recent eruptions remains a mystery. We do not truly know the source of large volcanic eruptions in 535, 1465, and 1808. Heading towards the western third of Canada, there is another such mystery. In British Columbia, two ash layers were discovered at several locations and dated to 10,600 years ago. These layers of ash were the result of two closely spaced large volcanic eruptions from the same volcano. Yet, the composition of these two ash layers does not match any known Canadian volcano particularly well. You would think that two very large recent eruptions would leave behind obvious signs on their volcano of origin, but nothing obvious stands out nearby. So, which volcano created these two mysterious eruptions which would have been similar in size to the 1990 eruption of Mount Redoubt in Alaska? The aforementioned sets of ash are referred to as the Finlay Tephras. They are found at several locations in far northern British Columbia where they are spread across an area of at least 17,000 square kilometers. This section of Canada contains the most numerous and most active volcanoes in the country. Here, the crust is slowly spreading apart to the east and west, allowing for magma to travel upwards through the crust and erupt onto the surface. This has created six separate volcanoes which are close enough to be the sources of this ash. With this being said, only half of these volcanoes have been extensively studied and have their young eruptions dated. Thus, potential young volcanic eruption sites have yet to be identified. With this being said, two of these young volcanoes can be immediately disregarded. Despite being the most active volcanic field in the country, the Iskut Yunuk River Cones does not produce highly explosive non cinder cone forming eruptions. Thus, it cannot be the volcano of origin. The second volcano, known as Hudu Mountain, seems at first like a close match, but cannot be the source of the ash as it was located beneath a thick glacier at the time of the eruption. Additionally, for the ash to be dispersed over a wide area, it generally follows an eastward path. Yet, the closest core drilled to Hudu Mountain did not have either of the two Finlay tephras present. To the north, the two closely spaced volcanoes Mount Edziza and the Spectrum Range seem like good candidates as they are very close by. However, despite each producing several young eruptions, these two volcanoes erupted the wrong types of lava. The Finlay tephras are composed of phonolite ash and these volcanoes primarily erupted basalt. The two remaining candidates have next to zero information on them mainly due to their extreme remoteness and lack of nearby settlements. Both of these volcanoes are considered to be active as they have young looking volcanic products on them. However, the Heart Peaks volcano also does not erupt phonolite. Thus, by process of elimination, it seems reasonable that the Finlay Tephras originated from the largest still active volcano in Canada, Level Mountain. Not only does this volcano erupt phonolite, but it is still geothermally active as it still contains actively bubbling mud pots. The exact site of origin of these two eruptions on this volcano is unknown, but will likely be uncovered through future more extensive studies. Both of these ancient eruptions were highly explosive, rating the volcanic explosivity index as a 3 or 4. Thus, Level Mountain is a much more active volcano than we initially suspected. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, if you would like to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon.